Hi there, my name is Jeremy Krug and I'd like to welcome you to another science and chemistry video. In this video, we're learning about scientific notation. If you're new to my channel, take a look around. This is the place for everything AP chemistry and honors chemistry. Hopefully you like what you see. Consider subscribing so you'll see a whole lot more of this. Now, whenever we talk about scientific notation, often we use this to express very large numbers. So for example, if we have this number right here, we can see this is a, a very large number. Some of you might look at this and read this as 19 trillion. You know, sometimes these zeros can get very confusing. It's sometimes the zeros start to run into each other. So what we do to turn this into scientific notation is we take the understood decimal point that's right here at the end and we move it so that the number is in between 1 and 10. So as I move this over to the left, you can see that the number is slowly getting smaller. And when I get to right here, 1.9, I'm going to move the decimal point to that place. Now, I move the decimal point exactly how many places? Looks like 13 places. So guess what? The number is 1.9 times 10 to the 13th. Now, this is scientific notation. That's how we write a number in scientific notation. Now, there are some words or some vocabulary words that are good to know. The exponent, this 13 right here, that's the power to which the number 10 is raised. That tells us how many decimal places the number in scientific notation is from the actual value of the number. And then we have this number out in front here. This is sometimes called the mantissa. Sometimes it's called the coefficient. There are some other names for that. But that value is that multiplier out in front that should always be greater than or equal to 1. And it should always be less than 10 as well. So we have some vocabulary for uh, these uh, these scientific notation numbers. Now we can do this for very small numbers as well. For example, this is a very small number as you can see. Once again, I'm going to take the decimal point. And I'm going to move it so that it has a value between 1 and 10. So 3, 4, and I keep moving that decimal point over to right there so that the number is in between 1 and 10. So 6.3. And how many decimal places did I move that? Well, I had to move it eight places. So this time it's 6.3 times 10 to the negative eight. Now, how do we write a number in scientific notation? Well, let's go through those steps again. First of all, you want to move the decimal point so that the mantissa or that coefficient there out in front is in between one and 10, greater than or equal to one and less than 10. And then we're going to count the number of decimal places that we move that over. Now the exponent is equal to the number of places that the decimal had to be moved. Sometimes students wonder, is it a positive exponent or is it a negative exponent? Well, the rule that I tell students is for very small numbers, the exponent is negative. For very large numbers, the exponent is positive. Now sometimes people say, well, if you move it to the right, uh, it's going to be negative. If you move it to the left, it's positive. The problem is when you take a scientific notation number and move it back to a regular number, now all of a sudden it's the opposite. So I just tell students if it's a big number, positive exponent. If it's a little number, negative exponent. So that's how you write a number in scientific notation. Now let's do some practice here. So here we have these three numbers. We'll start with 78,000. And once again, we have to move this decimal point over four places. So it becomes 7.8 times 10 to the fourth, doesn't it? How about this next number? Well, we have to move it over one, two, three, four, five places. So this is 8.26 times 10 to the negative fifth, because this is a small number, isn't it? How about this next number? If we take the decimal point and we move that over, how many places will that be? Looks like we have to move it over nine places, don't we? So that's eight times 10 to the ninth power. So writing numbers in scientific notation. How about the other direction? Can we write scientific notation numbers as regular numbers? Hopefully we can do that as well. 5.3 times 10 to the negative sixth. Well, that means it's a very small number since it's a negative exponent. So we're gonna move this over to the left. 
one and then the rest of those will have to have zeros as placeholders. So it's point zero 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 five three. Now the next number, 3.99 times 10 to the fourth, that's a large number, isn't it? Because we have a positive exponent. So we move the decimal point over in the other direction, 399, and then we have two more places to go. So we need some zeros as placeholders. So that would be 39,900. How about this next one? 8.22 times 10 to the negative fifth. Well, the negative exponent implies it's a small number, doesn't it? So we move it over to the left to make it a small number, and then one, and then we need four more places, so we need some zeros there. So it's a decimal point, and then four zeros, eight, two, two. So hopefully you can write regular numbers as scientific notation numbers, and you can also write scientific notation numbers as regular numbers, as you can see. Now, on your calculator, it's important to be able to perform scientific notation uh, problems as well. So on your calculator, you should have a special button that operates scientific notation. On certain calculators, it's labeled as EE. On other calculators, it's labeled as EXP. On some calculators, it's labeled as times 10 to the n or times 10 to the x. And the way that you type a scientific notation number, like for example, 5.3 times 10 to the negative 6, is you type in 5.3, and then wh whatever that operator is, if it's EE or EXP or times 10 to the x, and then negative 6. And so you may have to look into the manual for your calculator and find out how to do this. Either way, it's important that you know how to use your scientific calculator for problems like this. So when you key this first one into your calculator, you should get an answer of about 0.21147. Okay? Now, remember, in chemistry, physics, in all of science, we need to express our answers with the appropriate number of significant figures. So how many significant figures would that be? Well, should be two. We always go with the least. Two significant figures here, three significant figures there. So the least is two. So it's 0.21 is how you would correctly express that. How about this next problem? 1.00 times 10 to the 10th divided by 8.22 times 10 to the negative fifth. Try typing that problem into your calculator, and if you did this correctly, you should get this popping up on your screen or something equivalent to that. 1.21654512 times 10 to the 14th. Now, even though that appears on your calculator screen, you don't want to express all those numbers, because obviously that's way too many figures to express. How many significant figures? which should be three, shouldn't it? Because we have three significant figures in the first number, three significant figures in the second number. So when we round this off, it should be 1.22 times 10 to the 14th. Get in the habit of expressing your answers with the correct number of significant figures. I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, please slam that thumbs up button. If you really like what you see and want to see more of this, please consider subscribing. This is the place for honors chemistry and for AP chemistry. My name is Jeremy Krug. I'll see you next time.